Hello everyone, I am happy to announce the release of a new Mario Kart 64 ROM hack that I've been working on for a very long time, and now I finally finished, called the Death Race. You can find the patch for Death Race and a link to the game chart code and all my notes on it down in the links in the description below. In this video, I am going to play through the entire Mushroom Cup in 50cc one player Grand Prix mode so you can see how, how it all works. The basic idea behind the death race is that instead of trying to get first place after going around the course three laps, you have to hit everyone with an item or cause them to spin out or something like that three times. And um, each player has three hit points and after they've been hit three times, they die. And then you have to try and avoid uh, the same fate happening to you because if you get hit three times, then you die and you'll have to restart the, the course. Not only is this playable in one player uh, Grand Prix mode, it can be played in two player Grand Prix mode and in versus mode. So you can play Death Race with up to four of your friends. Death Race was inspired by a game mode of the same name in F-Zero X, which I thought was a lot of fun. So I thought, why not bring it to Mario Kart 64? When playing Death Race, I usually like to set the the HUD to this mode where there's a square going where the player portraits kind of go around the edge of the screen to show their positions. What's great about this HUD mode in, in Death Race is that when someone dies, their portrait will actually spin out and disappear. And so you can actually see who's still alive and where they are on the track. So I usually prefer to keep this, this HUD mode on when playing this. As you can see, as I'm going around the track, I'm trying my best to hit everybody as many times as I can. So, um, once I kill everyone and they all die, then the course will advance to the next race. Now there's only a few players left, so um, a lot of the times they'll just hit their own items or bananas or fake item boxes already on the course. But um, I like to try and kill them off as fast as possible. Now there's only two players, just Wario and Yoshi. Uh, Wario just spun out, and he's, uh, he's still alive. And, oh, he spun out again. Okay, now he's dead, so just Yoshi is left. And since I'm way ahead of Yoshi, I'm going to turn around to finish him off. Now I have a blue shell. That's it. Yoshi is a goner. And now he's dead. I won the course. A little bit on how the scoring system works. Um, if you win, you get one point. So Mario now has one point and everyone has zero. This only really matters in two player Grand Prix mode to keep track of who's actually winning. Another thing to notice at the end of each course is it'll tell you the total time it took you to kill everybody. Doesn't really matter to me, but for speedrunners, they might want to keep track of the time. In Death Race, every player has three hit points. And since I didn't really have a way to like show how many hit points you had when I was making this, after you are hit twice, you'll turn a shade darker, so that means if you take one more hit, then, then you're dead. As you will see soon. Oh, Mario just spun out, and now he's darker. So, hopefully I don't hit anything else. A little bit of the history of this hack. I started learning um, Nintendo 64 ROM hacking around 2018, 2019. I didn't really know a whole lot, so I started off just making game shark codes. And I ended up just making game shark codes a lot from Mario Kart 64. I don't know, there's not a, any particular reason. It wasn't exactly my favorite game on the system, but it was. It seemed to have a lot of things that you could do with it that nobody's really done. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I can make some codes that can make it do new things. And I ended up making a whole ton of game shark codes. You can find a lot of them on gamehacking.org. The biggest code that I made at the time, probably sometime in late 2018, 
It was called Frog Mode. And it was a code that changed the player states in the game. So basically, I made it so if you push the joystick forward, the player would fly up into the air and sort of hop around. The idea is to make the game play like Frogger. Turned out Frog Mode really wasn't that fun to play, so I don't think anyone ever really played it. There's a video of it somewhere on my YouTube channel if you're curious. Um, but it, it did sort of teach me a lot about how to make some really advanced game chart codes. I ended up figuring out a lot of different things, like you could stack um, conditional codes. These are the D0 and D1 type codes on the game shark. You can actually like check multiple things before you you write something to RAM, which I thought was interesting. Turns out it's just a quirk of the game shark and was not really intended by Daytel when they made it. But it does allow you to do some pretty advanced stuff. Um, one of the things I figured out how to do is to create things like counters. So like that's how I keep track of the score here. And other advanced things like bitwise logic and keeping track of multiple variables using two byte and one byte conditionals and writes. At the time I didn't really know how to make a proper ROM hack. I didn't know anything about MIPS assembly or how it worked and I had no idea how to inject C code into a game or how to write a hook. I had some vague ideas, but at the time when I was making Death Race, all I knew was game shark codes. So Death Race is entirely game shark codes. In fact, it's one giant long game shark code, about uh, 1300 lines, which of course you can never actually execute on a real game shark. So to develop Death Race, I would uh, set up all the lines of game shark code in a Google spreadsheet, which you can see um, in the link in the description. And then I would copy the gigantic list of game shark code to the cheat file for Moopin64. And that's, that's how Death Race was developed. I'm going to take a few second break from discussing the history to show you what happens when you die. Um, after you get hit three times, you blow up, and then the same course restarts, so you get to try again. So back to the history, I must have spent one or two years actually making all these lines of Game Shark code for a death race, all developed in Moopin64. I spent a lot of my free time working on it. I think I remember working on it on a, on a long airplane flight. It consists of different, uh, I call them engines, but you can think of them as functions. So I had like an, the entire Google sheet where I worked all this out. I had different sheets that were different engines and different columns for, you know, players one through eight. And so it got very complicated. Each engine sort of handled different parts of the death rates. Like there's a damage engine, there's one that checks win conditions, there's one that handles the score. And so, yeah, it's like a bunch of different functions you'd find in a program, except it was just a long string of Game Shark codes. Since I didn't really test it on anything else, I thought, oh, it should just work on everything. So when I copied the Game Shark code over to Project 64, which is the emulator most people play, it didn't work. <laughs> Much to my disappointment. And so, um,. Turns out Project 64 doesn't let you stack uh, conditional game shark codes, so that means you can't take more than one D0 or D1 type code and put them on top of each other like the way Moopin does it, or the game shark allows you to do. So I sort of put the idea of Death Race away until I could think of a solution and I started to explore ways that maybe I could inject the game shark code into the ROM and I couldn't really figure out a good way to do it. It took me a very, very, very long time, at least three years before I finally figured it out. Um, the fruit of my labor is what is called the Nintendo 64 Game Shark Code Injector. It's a utility that lets you um, inject game shark codes into the ROM, into Nintendo 64 ROMs. It originally only worked for Mario Kart 64, and so when I first made it, I put 
I injected the death race into a ROM and I think it worked on Project 64, but it turns out it, it crashed on console and I couldn't figure out why. It was the weirdest thing. It turns out there were multiple reasons it was crashing and so maybe once or twice a year I would take a look at the long game shark code that is the death race and sit down and try and debug if you could call it debugging why it was crashing on console and um, very very slowly I managed to fix one bug after another but there was one persistent bug who would crash after the first course and then after the second course loaded and I only recently figured out that um, this HUD mode that you see here, where it's the square that goes around the edge of the screen showing the player portraits, because Death Race actually sort of deletes a player when they die and their portrait gets removed, um, the game doesn't normally know how to handle that when, it, when the next course loads. And so um, it turns out I actually had to figure out a way to turn off this the HUD when a course ends and have to wait until the next course begins and Lakitu is done counting down and you cross the starting line before the HUD turns back on because only then does it initialize properly and prevent the crash. But after much work I was able to fix that and so now the death race is compatible on pretty much everything. Um, it'll run an emulator, it runs on console. Um, so it took, so I started working on this in probably 28 19 and it's now 2024 so it's been a about five years for me to finish this so I'm very happy to to get it out so you can actually play it and uh, I hope you enjoy the death race whether it's on emulator or console um, I have no idea if people actually want to play this but it's nice for to actually see it complete and the fact it's a game shark code means you can actually add stuff to it or modify it and then use the game shark code injector to make your own version so and toad is going to be the last one alive and well he can't escape the blue shell so uh thank you for watching and i'm just gonna let the last few minutes of the video play and you can see me win the death race